soon as we kind of came to a stop, they lost all power on the plane, so the captain couldn't really communicate with us. The flight attendants had like a portable uh, bullhorn that they were talking to everybody, saying, you know, asking us to stay in our seats, stay out your cell phones, we're gonna, you know, evacuate the plane, and we need everybody's attention, you know, all the stuff that you would expect them to say. Well, there's no indication there's anything wrong with the mechanics, and this is a very standard aircraft. Think about the MD-88, kind of a standard size for a commercial aircraft, weighs between 150,000 and 80,000 pounds if it were completely empty. So at the end of a flight like this, based on the passengers, the cargo, and the fuel load, it'd be somewhere in between. They're more on the lower side. And the cruising speed is about 500 miles an hour. All of the physics here matter because of LaGuardia Airport. Look at the length of this runway here. If you talk about LaGuardia Airport, you're talking about a runway that is about 7,000 feet long, the one they were aiming for there, compared to other runways nearby. Look at that. Newark, more than 11,000 feet. GFK, more than 14,000 feet. Much more room to work with as they come in and try to execute a series of maneuvers with those mechanics you mentioned, Jake. Their first one is they've got to get that speed down before they hit the asphalt here to about 155 miles per hour. One of the ways they do that is they flare the aircraft as they bring it in. You felt that when you're in a plane where it feels like it sort of leans back as it touches down. That's flaring. There's a particular warning with this plane that you don't want to flare too much because it flies very well and it will want to take off on you again. So that's the first step. Second step, they've got to reverse the thrusters and apply the brakes and try to crank it down to about 70 miles an hour. So you're more than having your speed here in a very short distance on this runway and then the thrusters are out of the picture, and just with the brakes, you're trying to get it down to 30 miles an hour, which would be a taxiing speed for a plane like this. And obviously, didn't work this time, Jake. Somewhere around the middle of the runway here, they had lost control completely, and that's where they went off. What happened with the mechanics? Well, maybe the mechanics all worked right, but we mentioned that flaring issue. Maybe the plane never totally set down on the runway. Maybe they just lost traction on the ice, the same way you do with your car, or maybe there was some kind of a crosswind or something that helped lift a little bit and move it off. A lot of questions for investigators, Jake. You've been stuck on one of these roadways for 14 hours, sir? Yeah, it's going on well, a little bit past 14 hours, actually. But um, we've kind of been sitting here uh, the entire time. I'm so sorry uh, to, to hear that. Um, as I understand it, you are traveling with your wife and two dogs in your vehicle. What is your circumstance, and what looks to be the, you know, the, the resolution to this? Is someone going to come and help you, or is it just the factor that the, the roadway is shut down and you have no options? Well, at this point, no, we don't have any options. I mean, we're pretty much surrounded by semis. Um, you know, and we could see them off to the distance. Uh, a local volunteer fire department came through a little while ago. There's several cars that had already ran out of gas and stuff. Uh, they're taking those people to warming centers. Uh, but even their concern was they didn't know how uh, they are going to get back to their cars or what they would do with them. Uh, behind us, there's two abandoned cars with the trucks right behind them. So I don't know even when they do open it up, people behind us, how they're going to get around those types of vehicles. And even if we have any going in front of us, uh, from what I understand, we're about four miles from the beginning of the mess, um, so we're not back as far as some people. I understand this this whole chain goes back 40, 50 miles, um, but it, it's it is a mess. Uh, the snow has stopped at least, but you know there's there's a lot of snow on the ground still, and and um, we're just sitting here praying and just trying to get out. You know, uh, if we can even at least get to Nashville, we're hoping um, by evening it'd be more than what we can do right now, but. Well, let's just keep kidding. Uh, we've been trying to ration what water and some snacky kind of foods we had. And, and, um, but, you know, I've heard about National Guard. We haven't seen any. Um, you know, I've heard about different things. But right now, no, we don't know what's going on other than sitting and waiting. We're going to talk to National Guard in just a moment, Patrick. But the pictures we're showing belie the real situation. Your dogs look like they're having a, a blast. And, uh, 
inside the car you look like it's kind of fun being that you know in the close quarters with them too although 14 hours of it I'm not sure how long ago the pictures were taken but on a more serious note your wife is diabetic uh, I know that you've got some cheese and crackers etc and that you're rationing the water but apart from that uh, maybe the best news is that you, you you started off on your trip to Florida with a full tank of gas my presumption is you're about three quarters of a tank now and you kept the engine running all night well no we're we we're actually in a, uh, a brand new Jeep who has a fuel efficient engine in and um, we filled it last night right before we got stopped uh, ran it all night and used not even a, a quarter of a tank uh, so we've since then, we we're turning it on and off now. Um, I ran it most of the night just because of the amount of snow coming down. Uh, the car was just getting encrusted with ice, and we were just, and we couldn't even open doors and things at times. Um, and now that the snow has stopped, you know, we're, we're cycling the car. We only run it for so long until we get cold to turn it back on. But uh, yeah. there's several vehicles behind us again uh, that had run out of gas and didn't have that option even.